In today's video, I use Cinema 4D for the very first time on my brand new Windows machine. Let's do it. So after a quick call to ABA Direct, um, the fan issue is way better. I had to go into the BIOS and um, change some of the fan settings back to auto. I think it just got shipped with the wrong settings. Let me show you how loud, first of all, just how loud this is. I'm gonna try to do like a before and after. So here's how loud the fans are right now. Now the machine is way quieter. Uh, in fact, when it's um, when I'm not rendering anything, there seems to be almost no noise. So we'll see what happens when we start to render. But so far, so good. I got Cinema 4D installed. I got Redshift installed. I got all of our um, Grayscale Gorilla plugins installed. And so I think we're ready um, to jump into the next section, which is open Cinema 4D and see what this thing can do. Enough talking, let's head on in and let's get going. All right, here we go. Let's open up Cinema 4D. I got it down on the taskbar. Let's hit the button. Gonna load it up and boom, here we go. We got the Redshift view. Oh, we got bling blings. Let's turn that off. Let's turn that off, kind of start from scratch. So the first thing I want to do is um, load up a physical render and just see the speed. We got all these cores. Let's get it going. Um, I could set up a scene, but I'd rather just get to uh, kind of something I can render. So for that, I'm going to use our, our brand new LightKit Pro 3. Uh, and what we also have as a part of this is our um, LightKit browser. So we're just going to pick one of these Light Studios. And uh, I'm gonna pick something kind of colorful and fun here. Let's try um, Cotton Candy Magic Hour. <laughs> so I just double clicked on that and it's gonna bring in all of our lights. And if I close it out, uh, it should have our model and our lights and everything set up for physical render. And so let's check it out here and then we'll do Redshift in a little bit. So first of all, I'm just gonna move around and make sure you know everything's moving around okay. This feels great. Um, it's very fast, the viewport's very smooth, and um, man, it's w already way faster than my, my iMac that I've used before, and I haven't even rendered anything yet. So um, let's just go ahead and click render and see what happens. So this won't look very good. This is uh, the, the standard render. You know, uh, LightKit Pro is built for physical render, so we're gonna go in there and start to turn all that on. But you can see it right there, 60, <laughs> 64 buckets doing their thing around the scene and uh, and take trying to trying to render this thing as fast as possible. So we clearly need to turn on some global illumination and also turn on physical render. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's go into our settings here and I'm using my uh, Wacom, Wacom pen, whatever you want to call it. And uh, let's just go in here and go to physical render, come down to physical and turn on progressive rendering. Now this will, um, if we hit render, uh, start to render progressively so it won't uh, do those buckets anymore. But you can see that already looks way better and it's rendering way faster. Physical uh, ends up being faster a lot of times uh, and Like It Pro is optimized for it. And that came together really nice. We're still missing some global illumination so let's go back into our settings here. And already I'm um, rem like reminded that I need to set up my my viewports here. Like I don't have my uh, layout the way that I usually have it. But um, in our render settings, we're gonna go to physical. Uh, oh, we're gonna go to effect and turn on global illumination. And I'm I always use QMC for um, for uh, physical render global illumination. It gives me the least amount of problems when it comes to rendering animation. And diffuse depth, I'm going to set to five because LightKit Pro is kind of optimized for three to five uh, bounces. Okay, so now when I hit render up here, the render view, it should progressive render. Boom, way better. Okay, baby, now we're talking. This looks way, way better. And um, again, this is using the CPU, right? This is the uh, physical render, and it's using the Threadripper that's in the machine, and it's progressively trying to make this look better and better. And that's 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 looking way better already than of course my iMac, which had you know a, a fraction of the power. So um, it's impressive for sure. Uh, the grain really cleaned up down there at the bottom already. And I could really easily see 
my scene um, and and, and kind of get an idea how it is. And I could I could um, you know move the camera around. Let's you know zoom in. Maybe get something like that. Hit render again and see how fast this moves. Now we're gonna do the GPU render here in a second. I have a feeling it'll be a little bit um, it'll be a little bit faster, but uh, that is pretty impressive. If you're not looking at getting you know into the third party stuff, you're still using physical. Obviously, just upgrading your chipset um, gives you a ton of power. Look at that; it's uh, calculating pretty quickly here. And one more pass, it'll be. Um, uh, a lot less grain here. Let's, um, all right, already excited. So um, let's go ahead and jump into Redshift. Now, I don't know a ton about Redshift. Um, I've gotten a pretty quick demo over at Chris's house uh, when he got his new machine. And so I'll probably mess something up, but this isn't a Redshift tutorial. We're gonna, we have other Redshift videos on Grayscale Gorilla and we have some more coming out as well. We also have our Redshift training that just came out. But um, I mostly just want to start playing with GPU renderers. So let's open up um, Redshift. So the first thing we need to do is convert this scene into a um, Redshift scene. Uh, like Hit Pro 3 uh, works with all, all the major third-party renders, which means as soon as you have them installed, uh, Like Hit Pro 3 will let you just switch all of your lights and your scene and prepare it for whatever renderer you want to use. So in this case, we can go up to our studio manager here and uh, it's the studio object. Come down to render and Redshift should be here. It is installed, it should be ready to go. Boom, right there on Redshift, click it and all of the lights and everything switch over to, um, to Redshift. So now the only thing we have to do is add a Redshift material. Uh, so if you go to create Redshift materials, material, it's probably a better way to do that, but that's uh, how I'm doing it these days. You could just drag it on top of your, um, uh, the model there. I'm gonna go back up to material for a second one and uh, replace the background as well. So these are just two gray materials. Um, we could probably change them down the road here, but let's just see what that looks like. I do wanna change this, this front gray one to uh, white. So if I remember correctly, you can go into the shader graph and then you don't have to mess with the shader right away. I think you could just go to diffuse and just change the color and uh, just kind of get out of there. Okay, so now I think if I did this right, you go to redshift and one of these is the viewer, red, render view, and one of these buttons loads it. Maybe a refresh or play, there we go. I'm learning, folks. I'm learning Redshift. I'm getting excited. Holy crap. That is beautiful. See how fast that popped in, too? I'm going to try to scale that up. So, uh, I don't know if the resolution will... Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, baby. All right. That is pretty amazing. Um, now, I'm going to rotate around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is why... This is why I got this machine. <laughs> um, look at how fast that comes in. So I can move around and it'll try to keep up in the viewport and then it'll instantly try to clean itself up. And wow, that is just way, way faster. And this is of course using the GPU and um, man, even just the feel of that render is, is very beautiful. Now, um, there's a reflection going on in the background that I'm not a fan of. I think it's coming from this new material. I'm gonna go into the graph and I think you can add blurriness to your reflection. Roughness, boom. Okay, that's gonna get rid of the reflection on the background. And we can make that white as well. Now here's something real quick that has been um, tripping me up in, uh, in Windows. And it is this, a lot of these dialog boxes have the button on the opposite side. On a Mac, the cancel button is on the left and the OK button's on the right. And um, this has tripped me up many times. I'll like dial a color in and go, yeah, I want orange or whatever. And then I'll click cancel instead of OK because it's opposite on Windows. But anyway, uh, keep an eye out for that if you're switching. Uh, let's just make it white. 
and man, that is that is very very fun um, to be able to see something like that. Now, I may be going a little overboard here, but I'm gonna try to add depth of field because honestly, as soon as I saw depth of field in Redshift on a fast machine. That was it for me. I was like, whatever that is, I will go buy whatever machine you tell me. And if it's got windows on it, fine. But if whatever that was that happened, I want to happen on my computer. So hopefully I could pull this off. Um, I think it's pretty simple if I remember right. I may mess something up, but we'll have plenty of videos to try to get you up and running. In fact, we already have some Redshift videos out. Um, Okay, so I think you, you add a Redshift tag to your camera. So I'm gonna go to uh, tag, Redshift, Redshift camera. And this is how a lot of the third party renderers work. They have tags that kind of add their stuff on top of the existing cameras and, and existing lights and stuff like that. Um, so with Like It Pro, it's all, it's easy to switch just one button, but other lights don't do that. Uh, you have to add tags. And then um, down here, there you go. Maybe this is it. Bokeh, 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 boom. Ba bam. Looky, he's blurry already. Okay, so uh, looks like I can add more blur here. <laughs> it's completely out of focus and it looks cool. Okay, let's try to make it in focus here. I'm hoping this focus distance just works. I could grab it and click on his eyeballs. Okay. I probably cl can't click in here. Probably got to go back into here and do that. So I'm going to select the camera, focus distance, click the eyeball, and boom. <laughs> yeah, baby. Okay, now we're talking. Check that out. So let's go back into this tag, kind of crank up our blurriness, and boom. Okay, uh, I'm officially sold. That is beautiful. Um, and man, okay, this is exactly, this is exactly why I got this machine, right? Okay, let's get the teeth more in focus. That's beautiful. Okay, see, I've been ignoring, I've basically been ignoring uh, animation for years. And it's because it's because of the hardware I was on. And I was waiting for that Mac to come and really help me bridge the gap. And it just never, never happened. And if you've noticed, a lot of my work has been more stills and for Instagram and not really getting into animation. And if I did get into animation, it was like the OpenGL renderer, or it was like a little cartoon test renderer. And you may have seen some other artists do that too. They're like, let's, let's wait and, you know, hold off and see if we could wait for, for Mac to, 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 to help us. And now that I could do this, I'm really excited to get animating again because of the rendering time, I think will be way less. So uh, let's, how do I quickly, well, we can do like a signal thing. You know what? Actually, Gorilla Cam. So if you have Gorilla Cam uh, or if you haven't seen it, it's a really easy way to animate your camera and add lifelike movement. I haven't been able to use it enough because of that animation thing. Um, and it just, if you haven't seen Gorilla Cam, it adds really natural camera movement to your scene. So I'm just gonna select my existing camera, go to plugins and click on Gorilla Cam. And it makes a duplicate of my camera, adds Gorilla Cam to it. And um, it makes it really easy to add some nice smooth movements and add realistic animation. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of these like uh, shake uh, movements here more slow movements and less fast movements. And let's just move this over and hit play. Oh my gosh, what did I do? This is amazing. Uh, I think I just split screened. Uh, <laughs> I think I just figured something out with Windows. It looks like you can easily split screen stuff. Um, okay, so uh, can I just drag it back out? Okay, that's good. And then here, I'm just gonna close this full. I think this is full screen. Let's go, <laughs> sorry about that. That was fun. I think I just dragged it over too far and then it snapped up into the corner, which is cool. I, I wanna look into that. Um, not right now. <laughs> I, want to, uh, I want to get some animation going here with this new machine. So um, 
So far, I haven't hit the Windows button and messed everything up, um, which is good. Uh, I guess I haven't done a lot of complex like copying and pasting or anything, but so far, so good. In Gorilla Cam, I slide all the sliders and I hit play. Boom. Okay, so now this guy um, has some really nice camera movement to him. And if I hit play over on the render view, uh, it should um, uh, copy over and there it is. Now it's showing up. Now it's trying to render every frame. There's probably a way to unlock that and just kind of see roughly uh, the, the scene. And it seems like uh, if I just pause that, it'll show and show us our rough animation over here. Okay, now I'm excited because now I could get animation that looks uh, really clean in, in you know, 10, 20, 30 seconds or a minute or so instead of waiting you know, um, hours with physical. So even just that frame right there is looking um, pretty good. So it does look like I need to uh, copy and paste this um, uh, Redshift tag over. So I'm just gonna hold down Control and drag it onto Gorilla Cam, and boom! Look at that. We got we got up the field, and then we got. I'm gonna hit play, and we got animation. And if I hit pause, it should refine this scene and start to look nice. Okay, that that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm excited. Like how quickly that just came in as an animation. So I'm realizing right now we don't have any global illumination on, um, uh, and frankly, I think we're hitting the limits of my uh, Redshift abilities. And I think if you go to Redshift, it, there's a GI tab, uh, a Radiance Cat. I, I'm probably, don't trust me, although that does look pretty good. Okay, here's none, none. The Radiance Cache, better. Radiance Point Cloud, boom. Okay, well, that looks sexy. So I don't know. That might be slow. I'm not sure the settings very, very. I'm not, I'm not good. Uh, I haven't got my full Redshift lesson yet. Uh, I have yet um, to um, schedule a call. I'm going to call up uh, Chad Ashley and get my basic kind of lesson. Um, but then also watch the Redshift training that we just put out and start to learn some more of the details. I know enough just to get this far but I'm excited to learn more. And already I'm super pumped because it's gorgeous. Um, the focus point is a little off. I'm gonna try to grab the eyeball. There it is, beautiful. And so now, man, that looks good. I love the glowiness and the pinky and the, oh, it's, it's gorgeous. So I don't know exactly what I'm doing here, but let's go ahead and try to kick out an animation with these settings. Um, there's probably some more settings in Redshift I have to tweak, and I, ju I just need I need to go watch the Redshift training and learn more about this. Um, but let's go to output. Let's go to all frames, and um, 1280 by 720 is fine for now. And let's just close this, because I think that takes up some of your resources on your uh, graphics card. Uh, I'm gonna hit Shift R, which works. Okay, that's good. That, that comes over from Mac, that's great. I don't need to save the file, that's fine right now. And we got our picture viewer. So if I did something right, hopefully I did something right, we're, we're gonna get um, uh, these redshift frames rendered in our picture viewer. We'll start to see um, the, the, the quality. I'm sure there's some settings I, I gotta turn up and I'm sure there's some things I could do to optimize this, but these are all almost all default settings, except I turned on global illumination. And man, that looks really nice. Uh, so there's obviously still some depth of field grain. And, uh, uh, but honestly, for 30, for less than 30 seconds, that's, that's a gorgeous render. Um, and it gets me excited to, um, it gets me excited to, to learn more. So, um, all right, so that, that is good. I'm gonna try one more thing, and this is the keyboard commands. I realized I didn't do a, t a ton with the um, object manager, and so I'm gonna go in there and kind of try to figure out the keyboard shortcuts because I know like things like copy and paste are different, and I'm gonna try to figure out how I can 
use the keyboard commands that I use all the time on Mac and make sure that they work on PC. So we'll, we'll save Redshift and animation, all that for some later videos. Uh, or if you want to check out our um, Grace Go Gorilla's Guide to Redshift, definitely check that out. But let me, let me close this down for now. Yeah. All right, let's start new here. And let's just go Classic Nick. I've done this a hundred times, probably thousands of times on a Mac. And I want to just make sure all the keyboard command stuff is still intuitive here. Um, so, you know, you, go, you come up to Cloner and you want the Cloner to be a, a, a parent of the sphere. So you hold down Alt and boom. Okay, that, that works. The Alt's in a different position on the keyboard, but that's okay, that works. Um, and so now, you know, you, uh, you can move stuff around, of course, and you can hit the scale and scale this down. And so let's talk about how to duplicate stuff. Because I do this all the time. I'll grab like a sphere or a cube and then I'll want to add a second one. And you drag it down and let's get the keyboard command. There it is. Control, boom, you make, you make uh, copies. So that's good. That's, again, it's a different part of the keyboard, but it, it works fine. Same thing. The real trick here, I think, is going to be uh, copy and paste. So copy and paste uses control, which is way in the corner. It's like, it's like way in the corner of the keyboard, and it's a different hand position. And this is uh, where I've hit the Windows key in the past. And um, uh, it, 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 I've done this quite a few times on other people's machine trying to navigate around. And so maybe I'm just used to it already just from setting up my, um, you know, setting up the, ma uh, the PC and playing with it. But um, so far, so good. I'm, I'm, I feel comfortable. The keys are good. Um, so yeah, maybe there's less to worry about. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else here. Now, I have had issues with the, with the Wacom pen selecting some things, specifically corners of objects. And uh, I'll wrap up with this because I know um, we'll jump in more to what this machine's capable of and learn more stuff. But I wanted to show you some of the the, the real differences that I've bumped into. Um, so if I pull up the settings menu, um, or actually the render uh, window is, is much more, um, uh, let's go to something more pretty. <laughs> okay, so this corner, trying to drag corners with a Wacom pen on a Mac um, is intuitive to me, or maybe I've just done it for a long time. But on a, uh, on a PC here, I, uh, it seems hard for me to find it. And so you can see right there, it kind of jumps between down and, and over, and it can get real tricky to grab the corners of things. Um, but, you know, I'm not having a super hard time right now. So again, maybe this is just something I, I need to get used to. This full screen thing is definitely something I need to work on and figure out. But um, yeah, so far so good. Okay, so... Uh, I'm excited. So, so here's here's what we're gonna do. Let's get this let's get this thing back up here because it's just too good not to have in the background. In fact, let's go back to um, let's go back to this render and kick it up full full screen here. I go to plugins. No, Redshift wrench, render view. Hit play. It's gonna Break. Oh, see here, this corner right there, that's really difficult for me to grab. There we go. But I'm going to make it as big as I can while I finish up the video because it's the colors are too nice. This is exactly why I got this machine. Um, and I'm, I'm excited we're here. I'm excited to, to be at this moment where now I can start to play and animate and actually get frames that look like this in 20, 30 seconds instead of hours. And so um, I'm going to continue to report any big issues that I have with, um, with the PC. You can expect almost all of my future tutorials to be on this machine. And so I'll kind of report things over time as I do. And I have some other videos planned where I'm going to talk more about the tools that I'm missing from this PC, um, specifically Mac-specific workflows that 
don't include Cinema 4D. Things like looking at files, searching for files, um, you know, hitting the space bar and having, you know, images pop up full screen. Um, the finder, I don't even think they call it a finder on this thing, but trying to get, um, trying to get that looking similar to what I am used to on a Mac. And so I'm sure I'm gonna run into many, many more things, but that's just my first few minutes inside of Cinema 4D. And if I missed something, I know I missed something, um, hit me up in the comments down below and I'll try to either answer the question or show you in the next video um, how something works different on PC. So far, um, my impressions are that everyone was right, right? It's a little bit finicky, it's, a, it's different than what you're used to, but once you're in Cinema 4D, and I suspect this is similar with like After Effects and other, you know, uh, programs. Once you're in the program, there's not a lot different going on. It's all about the launching and the, you know, how the finder works and how things download and install. Although I didn't have a lot of problems there either, right? Um, I downloaded our software and now that our software has an install um, set up, it was really easy to get in here. Um, and Redshift was, was pretty easy to install, uh, Cinema 4D, obviously. So as I find things, I'm gonna keep you up to date, but for now, I'm excited. Um, I wouldn't wanna go through that process a lot of setting up a new machine like that, but I suspect that this machine will live with me for a while and I could start to use it, start to get used to it. So again, hit me up with any questions in the comments, I'll try to answer them, but for now, I'm excited to go play with this thing. I'm gonna go do that and uh, hope to see you in the next video. Uh, thanks again for watching, and um, uh, I'll, I'll definitely be doing more of these in the future. Until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video real soon. Bye, everybody. I'm gonna go play with some Redshift.